this is inside the yarn studio that is completely uh, robbed from inside the actor studio, but I don't think that guy will care because I think he's dead. <laughs> this is Laura Jean. How's it going? Hi. Shannon. Hi. And who is the original starter up or person, I guess? So Laura I Jean. did this, and Shannon does designs with um, yarn for me. So, uh, but we are melding into the same person. And so that's how we made Shannon Jean Club was um, combining all her pattern club and then yarn from me. So I'm just the knitted wit. So you guys know that we do the Shannon Jean Club, what they're talking about. And that was like, we put that in our email earlier this year where we started out um, every other month, it would be a yarn from Knitted Wit with a pattern. And we put it together so that you could learn new stitches, you know, every other month. And that gave you time to um, complete it without feeling like you had to start a new thing. And it's only for the project for us. So it was a nice little thing they put together for little yarn stores. Let's go ahead with you, Laura Jean, this probably applies to you. So what led you to start your business in the fiber world? Um, I learned to knit when I was about 14 and I, I wrote in my diary, I learned how to knit and it's so amazing. <laughs> like that's what I did this summer after I think my freshman year in high school, <laughs> such a nerd. Um, but I started dyeing yarn um, because I'd taken, I was super into spinning. My best friend had just moved from Portland. And so like, I kind of was filling the void and, and finding new friends. Um, I took a spinning class and I met Helen and uh, we were trying to buy fiber for spinning and it was so hard to come by. Like everything sold out so fast. And so we're like, well, we could dye it. And so we each started our own dyeing businesses in our basement and mine eventually moved around a little bit, but was at home. And then I um, moved out after my um, daughter was born. Um, so it was, it was just because I couldn't get what I wanted. Like I, I could never get into the updates to buy anything. So we just started dyeing it. And then that led to yarn and then that led to, um, yeah. But I think I've always had, like, before we even started that, I, me and my husband had looked into um, opening a restaurant, and then it was, there was a yarn business on the coast that was for sale. So the entrepreneurial bug was, was very much a part of it. Cool. Yeah. And how many years has it been? 13. That's not one of the, that's not one of the questions. The follow-up yeah. question. 13. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I started in um, the spring of 2007 and 13 years later, still kicking. So were you two friends at that time? We actually met in 2007. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. So yeah, so my, my kind of uh, knitting world origin story um, is parallel time-wise to Laura Jean's. I um, worked at the Veterans Hospital here in town and a woman I worked with, we were in a knitting group together and she and I started talking about opening up a, opening up a yarn shop. Mm -hmm. And so at first it was like, you know, yeah, one day we'll open a yarn shop. And then um, <clears throat> we both realized that we didn't want to be doing what we were doing. We were both in admin at the Veterans Hospital and it just wasn't, you know, wasn't like filling our buckets. So um, we, in 2007, spring of 2007, we opened up a yarn shop here in Portland. Mm -hmm. um, and so, Laura Jean was one of our first hand dyers. It was right when indie dye, indie dyeing started to be really popular and people were selling on Etsy. You know, it was kind of like the beginning of the of indie dyeing. It was right when Ravelry started. No, yeah. I was uh, through an indie dyer that we carried at the time. I was, I'm like super, I have one of the super low numbers on Ravelry because I got invited super early before anybody knew what it was. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so we opened in 2007, carried Laura Jean's yarn. Um, she and I became friends through that. Mm -hmm. uh, realized as we started getting to know each other better, realized we had more and more in common. Oh. We share a birthday. <laughs> share a birthday, wow. Yeah. Different years, but the same day. Yeah. Um, cool. And then um, Laura Jean started working at our yarn shop um, as, a, as an hourly employee. Um, and then after I left the yarn shop, I sold the business to my partner. Mm -hmm. um, 
I started designing more and started working with Laura Jane more and started going with her to the trade shows and being more involved in her business and in designing for her business. So, yeah. And now we're like dying because we can't see each other in person. <laughs> <laughs> or when we have like, so Shannon, does, she lives about a mile away from me and we have seen each other. Like she just came over on Saturday, but we can't hug. Yeah. And we're just like a mm-hmm. hugger. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's very strange to see each other in person, but not get to touch. Yeah. Right. That's just a, just change the way you think about everything really. Yeah. 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 Last night I was going to sleep and I was thinking about, uh, <laughs> it's just so silly, but I just finished my shawl or my big schlanket and I was like, Oh, I remember being at yarn shows and everybody's wearing their thing and you get to go up and kind of pet them and then get to have hugs. And I was like, Oh my God, I don't get to hug anybody. anymore, <laughs> Except for your family. And you're like forcing hugs on your kids. Right. <laughs> They're like, Oh my God, stop touching me. <laughs> okay. So the next question is what, what's your current whip work in progress? What are you working on? Well, I just finished this last night, so I'm going to brag about that. Oh, please do. Oh my gosh, look at that. Whoa. Um, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. So at the beginning of quarantine, I was about here. I, in February, I started, I picked this up again and started knitting. And then um, I don't know where I ended up, I guess, at the beginning of quarantine, but um, I was about here when Shannon said, why don't you just double it? <laughs> <laughs> make it a reflection so that's what I did what it is is that, um it's that tin can knits blanket and she was making like a crib blanket yeah. wow yeah that so, is gorgeous I haven't blocked it obviously but right now it stretches uh a little bit past fingertip to fingertip and then I'm going to leave all of the the ends as fringe I'm going to trim them up so I just finished that <laughs> it's so amazing yeah I just learned Stephen uh, West um, flip uh, the flipping your ends in the weaving the weaving your ends as yeah. well. That's a life changer. Whoa. Yeah, I'm gonna start doing that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm what? I'm like knee deep in a project that has tons of ends, and then I saw that, and I was like, oh. <laughs> it is um, been a life changer. Game, so not a game, a game and life changer. Right. So, what about you, Shannon? I'm mostly right now working on socks. Um, I just released a sock collection. Laura Jean and I do a um, summertime sock knitting extravaganza every summer where we encourage people to knit socks all summer long. Mm -hmm. And we call it Socks on Vacay. And this year it's also Socks on (laughs) Staycay. Our vacations are going to be happening in our backyards this year. Um, So this is one of the patterns from it. You can't see it super well because, but it's just slip stitches and garter stitch. Super simple, super fun. Cool. Yeah, so I'm just uh, knee deep in socks, making lots. But here we have some of their, this is Victory Socks, some of their sock yarn. So this is one we paired with another nameless yarn. Um, to, to This is one of our Breathe and Hope kits. Oh, nice. Yeah. But they're so pretty together. It's like the combination. Awesome to see for that. Yeah. Okay, this is my, probably my favorite question. What's your favorite breakfast cereal? Oh, I haven't been eating a ton of cereal, but I mean, Lucky Charms, like I'm all about the sugar. So <laughs> that's my favorite. <laughs> um, my favorite breakfast cereal is like a bagel and avocado because I do not like breakfast cereal. <laughs> yes, I'm getting a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, if Lucky Charms was, a, was calorie free, I'd probably eat my weight in it, you know, because my mother didn't let us have sugar cereal. So when I got to college, oh, yeah. that's all I ate. Yep. Okay. Let's see. This one is the kind of a tough one. If a song played every time you entered the room, what would it be? Oh my gosh. I love this question. I was thinking about this. Right. It really depends on <laughs> uh, current circumstances, I think, because there's sometimes when Shannon and I walk into a room and it should be like clown music playing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like when the clowns are spilling out of one of those teensy cars. Yes. <laughs> when we travel together, we typically fly Southwest because we can bring four suitcases, 50 pounds each, mm-hmm. um, four all together. And so we are usually 
literally weighed down with bags and um I don't know how y'all feel about swears, but we make asses of, out of ourselves on the regular, <laughs> especially when we're traveling and so tired and, and just being silly. So I think it really depends on the circumstances. I mean, I would like to say like some Beyonce song with like wind machine, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> gotta have the wind machine. It really doesn't matter who sings as long as you have a wind machine. Just the wind machine, actually. <laughs> I was thinking, um, it's funny that you're so close to Dollywood because I was thinking pretty much any Dolly Parton song, I'd be happy to walk into a room. Absolutely. You know, yeah. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. She's at, what do we call her? The patron saint of the Great Smoky Mountains <laughs> where, we, where we live here. Yeah. She actually does a lot for the community. She's, she She's is a patron amazing. saint. Yeah. That's wonderful. Okay. What is one thing you hate that most people love? TED Talks. You hate TED Talks? Tic Tacs? No, TED Talks. Oh, oh TED Talks. <laughs> she said Tic Tacs too. <laughs> TED Talks. Okay. They're, they're just on my jam, and I know people go crazy about them, but ugh. I, <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. But how do you feel about Tic Tacs? <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> I love them, but I have a tooth that I'm always worried about breaking, so I get a little nervous about them. <laughs> I think my answer is I don't hate it so much as I really never want like ice cream. My family is crazy about ice cream. So many people are crazy about ice cream. It often makes me feel yucky. It's like too much dairy. Um, yeah. And I just don't love ice cream. I'd rather have chocolate. But if, chocolate. if you didn't get a stomach ache, would you like it? I don't know. I've never been a huge ice cream person, just in general. I am um, not a big fan of the go to the movies. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm. Do so you like watching movies? Mm -mm. Okay, yeah. I'm not a much of a TV person. Yeah. Unless it's a documentary, you know, and I can't find anything else to do. Yeah. A lot of times I listen to music when I'm it. Yeah. I don't know. It's just a thing. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Totally get that. Do you have any pets or a spirit animal? I have a pet. Uh she's the worst little tiny dog in the world uh and the only reason why she's not down here is i think the door is shut she's six pounds of a tiny little dog and she's obsessed with me <laughs> so <laughs> she's usually like velcroed to me um i don't have spirit animal maybe patronus uh <laughs> and i don't i don't I mean, for knitted wit, it would be a unicorn. Like, I don't know if y'all are familiar with our colors, but we have like eight different unicorn colors. And I think, I mean, there's something pretty majestical about this big old beast uh, and, and rainbows. <laughs> I'm literally on your shoulder right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Shannon? Well, so I have, uh, um, I have a dog. Uh, it's a small dog too, named Bowie. He is a rescue and he is... Um, a uh, some kind of a terrier, a Norwich terrier mix, and he's just the sweetest little thing ever, and we love him so much. My um, I have two kids so, who are also kind of my pets. Um, <laughs> Eleven, <clears throat> and um, yeah, we love we we did not have pets until a couple of years ago, and realized that we can't imagine our lives without a little doggy in it. You know, he's so sweet. We love him so much. He sleeps with all of us. Throughout the course of the night, he goes from bed to bed to snuggle with everybody. Oh, that is yeah. so sweet. Um, and as far as like kind of a pat Patronus or, or something animalistic representative, I mean, I feel like it would be a magical creature too. I um, feel like I like magical creatures, you know, almost more than real ones. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I have two little girls, um, one of whom is obsessed with unicorns and one of whom is obsessed with the dragon so it would probably be like a dragacorn or a unit dragacorn unit dragon unit you know something <laughs> a fire breathing <laughs> unicorn yeah oh, there you go. Yes. yes yes maybe that's a colorway name right <laughs> fire breathing <laughs> unicorn there i just gave you one one for the team there you go <laughs> love it um where are you going to go first after the restrictions are lifted i'm gonna go to her studio yeah oh, okay <laughs> 
I'm going to go to Shannon's house and we're going to sew. Yeah, we're going to sew together. That's what we're going to do. So what does it look like in, um, in Portland for time that you guys can get? Um, I think, so just this week, we, uh, we are opened up for um, medical, non-urgent medical stuff, surgeries and dentists, I think can open back up. A hair salon opened and the owner got arrested. Um, our state of emergency has been extended through July 6th. July. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, just state of emergency, not necessarily state home order. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, so I will say one thing, like, I, I don't know what side y'all are on, but what's great about the extended emergency is it protects um, unemployment. It protects evictions. It protects um, for both re like renter, like, um, residential and businesses. So it, I think it's safeguarding our economy. Um, we, in my household, we have some, my husband has Crohn's disease, um, and is on, uh, immunosuppressant. Um, so like, that's the, so funny because, uh, my manager who's in the back, she has the same thing and it's on the it, same thing. Yeah. It's terrifying. Um, so we don't want it. <laughs> so we are take like, we are happy to take all the precautions necessary. Um, we've been this winter, we were super sick in our household, Portland. It's like was overrun with terrible flu and pneumonia this winter. So my oldest was sick from December 1st until a week into quarantine because he just kept getting virus after virus. So like, we're happy to be healthy. We're happy to be yeah. safe. Um, and thankfully, financially, like my husband is still working. He's a, um, a kitchen manager for a housing facility. Mm -hmm. And so he's cooking. Um, and then like, while things have definitely shifted at Knitted Wit, I'm down to just one employee instead of five. Um, you know, we're, we're just so thankful to be healthy and safe. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, we, I don't think we really know any dates beyond we're open for non-emergency medical at this point. Um, I, I don't know if you saw the sham, but they just released statistics for um, cases per zip code. Mm -hmm. And where the studio is, there's 49 cases. So it's about 12 and a half people per 10,000. And then, but where my home is, and I think yours the same zip, Shan, um, mm -hmm. there's only like 10 cases. So yeah, Oregon has done, has, has is having success with flattening the curve. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And much like Laura Jean was saying too, my husband and I both work from home and have, so we've had it pretty easy as far mm -hmm. as quarantine has gone. And um, I'm in no hurry to leave our safe little, you know, bubble. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've we're making it work being at home, and we're not, you know, I'm not gonna. If schools are open in the fall, I might not be sending my kids back just yet. Not until there's like a. Yeah. Yeah. And we have. Um, in Tennessee, everything's pretty much open except just working at half capacity restaurants and retail, um, except for the major cities. Yeah. So, um, and Nashville, think, Chattanooga, all that, those yeah. places are still, you know, under the house arrest thing. But, um, yeah, I don't I know. Think a huge consideration is rural versus urban or yeah. suburban. You know, like I think I, those obviously are very different. Um, density. Yeah, yeah, and and just the capacity of what what hospitals can do, and yeah, yeah, it's it's. I do not envy anybody having to make any of these decisions, and I am super happy to just stay at home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I will say, being at home with my kids and homeschooling has been horrendous, but <laughs> we're healthy, as my husband likes to remind us. So, yeah, <laughs> I'll take it. Okay, let's see. Um, what would you be doing if you weren't doing this? Like yarn? I don't know. Anything. Uh, Dream job, I guess, or if this is not it, plan B. I don't know. I feel like if I weren't doing this and hadn't started a business of my own, I would probably be doing some sort of um, like project management or coordination, which is what I did before this. Um, okay. And I liked it. I liked you know, I liked parts of it. And it's what I kind of do. I do a lot of it now. Yeah, you're okay. really good at it, Jan. It, it's kind of what I do, yeah. <laughs> I do a lot of it for Knitted, you know, I work with Knitted Wit and do a lot of it for them. Um, and that's what I did when I worked at the Veterans Hospital. I worked with um, 
mental illness education programs for veterans and coordinated okay, cool. and stuff. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. I like, as a kid, I always wanted to work at a grocery store. I had like dream jobs and that was one of them. Really? Um, yeah. I, cause so I grew up in Sitka, Alaska, which is a small Island community. And my brothers all worked at the grocery store bagging groceries. And I was like, well, naturally that's what you do. You grow up mm -hmm. when you're a teenager, you bag groceries. And I did not get that opportunity. And I feel like I've really missed out in life. <laughs> um, but like, <laughs> I'm a very simple person. I think scanning groceries and getting to chat to people with people would be just a lot of fun. So that's on the list of someday, someday I will do that. Well, I know they're looking for workers now. I know, right? <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Maybe when I don't have to wear like uh, medical grade protection, I might be more interested. <laughs> okay. Do you guys have any collections other than yarn? Oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I what? That. <laughs> Markers, craft supplies. <laughs> uh, I went through a big Pyrex phase, uh, makeup, fabric. I mean, what's in this room? Tarot cards. We tarot both cards. have, um, we have found through the course of our friendship that we both have the kind of personalities that like we never dip our toes into something. We just like strip down and dive right in. <laughs> Any obsession. Yeah. And we, we are both wonderful and terrible for each other in that we bring the other person along. Yeah. Like, yeah. okay, so what do we, let's, let's get obsessed with this now. Let's do yeah. this. Yeah. And Shannon's real thrifty, so that helps. From the Midwest, uh, so I'm very thrifty. Yeah. <laughs> the Pyrex is interesting. I think the one guy we interviewed a couple weeks ago, he collected Christmas houses, village oh. houses. Yeah. So you just yeah. never know what people. Yeah. How about any strange phobias? Spiders, planes, you know, that sort of thing. Heights. I'm scared of heights. Oh yeah, definitely heights. Um, I, so we do travel a lot, uh, and I've started traveling with, um, medication because <laughs> flying has not gone so well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we were flying back from, um, we went to New York and New Jersey and, and we ended up doing, and we did Ryan Beck at the end of the trip and then coming home, we flew through um, Chicago and coming out, we had probably one of the worst flights I've ever been on. And like, it was, I, did, I had a very big panic attack and then <laughs> almost tossed my cookies. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna contact my doctor before I travel again. And I uh, highly recommend it. It was mm. way more fun. I don't know if it was fun for Shannon to have me medicated, but I had a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> oh. It was better than me gripping her hand, her knitting hand. I was like, don't hurt her hand. I'm holding her the whole time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we made it to 130, which is usually my goal with these questions. And so if, yeah, you're, ready to be, if you're ready to be assaulted, I'm going to unleash the hounds. We talk oh. a lot, so. Unmute all. <laughs> the hounds are released. The hounds? <laughs> <laughs> I object to that. <laughs> Well, I have a show and tell. Ooh. Let's see it. Um, you guys had on the Etsy uh, site uh, the uh, yarn that's on the cones, uh -huh. and uh, it's yarn that doesn't meet the right uh, yardage requirement for the skeins. Yep. And you will dye them to order. And you guys had a sale over a month ago. And um, I got some of the um, silk base. Um, mm -hmm. I got the unicorn color in that one. You guys dyed uh, two pounds of American Samoa. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if anybody remembers dyeing the American Samoa. And it does not show up well at all. But this color is so beautiful. And this sweater is called um, Porto. Uh, P-O-R-T-O, -O, and it really shows off the colors. That's awesome. Yeah, That's so the, much nice job, job, everybody. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're so far. It's a top-down sweater. Hat on the back. 
And I decided I'm giving this one to my mom. Her birthday's on June 3rd. So nice. I might get it done in time for her birthday. I've never made it her sweater. I've made her things, but never a sweater. So, but I'm, nice work. American Samoa is just such a wonderful color. So many shades of green and there's some browns and some turquoise in there. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just really lovely. That's so, awesome. Good I job. just want to tell you guys, thank you for dying this just for me. Aww. <laughs> but yeah, I was the person that requested two pounds of this stuff. And when it came in the mail, I was just like, here's, here it is. Here's the skein. Well, the ball anyway. It's beautiful. So, but I just want to say thank you very much. I just love this color. Thank you. Good job. Gorgeous. Good job. Do you have any favorite designers? <laughs> Um, I mean, Shannon, she's my favorite. Well, yes, other than yourselves, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that's a great question. So I have terrible reading comprehension and um, I get super nervous about uh, reading patterns. And so I really honestly tend to stick with Shannon's because I know I can mm -hmm. text her <laughs> or face yeah, her. And uh, so, and then I'm also, once I know how to do it, I tend to do it a whole bunch. Like this is my third blanket um, because- Oh, I you're a serial knitter. Yeah. I think Tin Can Knits, their patterns are, are super approachable. Um, so it's any pattern that I know, I don't have to, like, like I just need it spelled out for me very clearly. So I, I definitely tend to limit myself what I knit because of that. Uh-huh. I mean, it's great to understand your strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What about you, Shannon? Do you have uh, somebody that you well, I don't, um, I admire don't anyway? anybody else's stuff. I just don't have time. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, there are a couple of designers that I admire so much and really like as, as people, you know, mm -hmm. which I think is really important too. Um, so Kira um, Delaney, Kira K Designs, she's a designer out of California and she does both knit and crochet. Oh, cool. She does a lot of Tunisian crochet designs, which are really lovely. Mm -hmm. She's a wonderful person. She's like, I don't know how she has the energy she has, but she teaches like adults and kids and yeah, she's wonderful. Um, so I really admire her and admire the fact that she does both knit and crochet because I think um, oftentimes crochet gets kind of left in the you know, it gets kind of left in the dust. That is true. Very, yeah. very true. Um, and then, I'm sorry? Angela Tong and her weaving patterns are so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Angela Tong um, out of New Jersey does a lot of, um, I mean, she's just, if you don't follow her on Instagram, you should, because she just does the most, she's, she does everything beautifully. You know, yeah. she, mm -hmm. she likes to, she's been dabbling in um, ceramics and she bakes and and then weaving, she does weaving patterns, which are really cool. Um, yeah, I think those are two of my kind of favorites right now. I like both of them a lot mm -hmm. and like what they do. And I like seeing mm -hmm. things that aren't just knitting. You know, I, re I wish mm -hmm. that I, I want to be a person who does more than just knit too, you know, as far as fiber arts. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Thanks. Okay. Who's next? Well, can I, I did a pair of socks for my niecling who picked your yarn out. It was called Velvet Elvis. Mm -hmm. She has no idea who, I don't know, can you see that? Oh, no. Look. And the colors kept like changing, so I would switch on the feet so they looked like they were purposely done crazy that way. <laughs> I thought it was so cute. She loved them. That's awesome. Even if she didn't have any clue who Elvis was. <laughs> no, we did the we did the club where we would get a random holiday colorway once a month. Yeah. That was loads of fun. Anyway, yeah. was thinking about Vita, who just caught uh, in the National Donut Day. All the ladies crazy about some donuts Vita is. So we made a oh, big event out of it. We had donuts. And oh my donuts. gosh, that's my emergency knit. I still haven't finished it. <laughs> it's so cute. I have it. See, I, I always have it for emergency. Wait a minute. Can you see? Oh, oh that's cute. cute. Yeah. That's called Go Nuts for Donuts. My yeah, gosh, I'm hungry for donuts so bad. Just seeing that skein. I know. <laughs> Me too. What's that? We want some donuts. Yeah. Makes oh. us look great just seeing that. I love that colorway. My favorite one, but not for the color, but for the name, was um, National Clean Out Your Refrigerator Day. 
That's my favorite. Did you do it, Dante? <laughs> no. Bold mold. No, I just, that really got me laughing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Their colorway names are so... How do you funny. come up with the colorway names? Do you think the name first and then do it, or...? Um, so lately it's been like, here's our theme, and we'll create the color around it, and then we have to name it like our herstory one. Um, we have all the women picked out, and we've created all the colorways, and then every month I need to find a name for them. Um, so usually when there's a bunch of employees at the studio, we just kick, you know, stand around and, and kick names around. Um, but there's been a few times, even pre pandemic where I was like, Oh crud, I need to come up with a name right now. And I texted a few people, nobody responded. So I was like, well, I guess this is the name, but then it turns out it was kind of an offensive <laughs> saying. <laughs> so we had to backpedal and change that. Um, so I do best by committee. You need to have one called homeschool hell. <laughs> <laughs> Write yeah. that down. That's number two, the second one I've given you. And I've already thought about what a fire breathing unicorn needs to look like. <laughs> Bright oranges and reds with speckles everywhere <laughs> and white and slashes yeah. of blue. Well, what stinks right now is we, we do have some ideas, but we can't get to them because I, it's just me and my dyer. And so yeah. we're, we're, we're staying on top of things, but like, I want to do one called feeling my feelings and rainbow of emotions because I use those sayings a lot. Um, but yeah, we just haven't had time. So usually it's, it's by committee and we're all just sitting around BSing, mm -hmm. uh, unicorn giggles. We laughed no like my stomach hurts so hard we laughed for like two hours and we're like it's the just unicorn farts one has been very popular here <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so that's that we have a lot of fun with the names for sure it's great yeah I mean you know a lot of people especially if they're traveling they're visiting here they will buy something just for it right and so that's why I really like to keep those things in um and I'll start talking up I'll start talking up the fire breathing Dragon horn. <laughs> and they also get these and we love these. They're so cute. These yeah. little tiny little smarties. They're so cute. No, those are cute. And then they're good to have because some people just need a little bit or um, heels and toes, you know, and I can't imagine what a pain and drain that is to do. They're the worst. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> I like, especially now, again, since it's just me on that side, like I treat the studio kind of like a restaurant front of the house, back of the house. Mm -hmm. And so the back of the house is dying and the front of the house is winding off, twisting and labeling and shipping. And that's just me. So mm -hmm. we can't have minis right now because our 40 color palette, um, we break down uh, 40 full skeins and we get two sets that we send to yarn shops. And that takes about um, six hours of just winding off into minis, but then we have to twist it and label it. So it's, it's a lot of work. And unfortunately I do not have that many hours. So. If you guys, we have, we have a basket. Let's just show them how cute the little basket is, but no, now, now I appreciate, now I'll appreciate them even more. <laughs> they are so fun though. Thank you. Let's see. Oh. Do you have a ne next theme kind of in mind? Um for so we're doing national parks right now and this is our last summer of US national parks because we it's just oh, okay. 16 of them. Um, Herstory this year is women that are the first of whatever category. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a theme for next year's history. Um, I don't know how to phrase it. Though. Oh, that's how you're saying that the whole time I'm thinking her story, her story. Yeah. Um, there you go. And I, I feel, so usually we do all of our planning for the next year in like the last quarter. So like, like mm -hmm. October, November, we do a lot of planning. So right, right now this time of year, we're just sort of writing those <laughs> Fumes and waves. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, we something um, coming up in the winter. Oh that yeah. We're, that we're working on now, and we're going to be sharing with yarn shops soon. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we you have heard it here first, people. You heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this the the so it's it's something for the very end of the year and we started working on it at the end of last year. And that's kind of like the hard thing. I'm terrible about secrets and I will just tell anybody everything cuz I don't like oh my gosh, I just can't hold it in. So it's hard to pre-plan sometimes that mm-hmm. far in advance and not get to talk about it and then by the time we get there I'm like, "Oh my god, this is all I've been doing for a year. Why do I care anymore?" <laughs> <laughs> like it can be hard old. to carry, yeah. yeah it can be hard to carry the enthusiasm because I'm probably already working on the thing to be excited yes. about in another twelve months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you guys gonna do the random holiday thing again, or are you do thinking about something else? So the Shannon Jean Club is what filled that gap. Okay. Yes, and yeah. we do that. By, yeah. By the way, you guys, we do that. Yeah, that's what I was working on yesterday. I shipped out the samples and the. Uh, rainbows are involved um and, and, minis. and minis yeah yeah so th- this month I'm really excited about it. I know I know what it is <laughs> <laughs> and then Dawn here that, talking about a scheme that you just have to have to have to have the she had to have melted crayon oh yeah when oh, she thought yeah. it was the last yeah. one but she had to get it right then it's and take so it home good. and pet it and call yeah. it George <laughs> totally understand that i would like to thank you for the minis because i do a lot of stephen west and he has color pops that don't yeah. really require that much yardage in the middle of a big project so it's really nice to have those yeah yeah and i love that about the 40 color palette is it has those neons mm-hmm. dual tones pastels just neutrals it has all of them and so yeah it kind of it can fit everybody's need hopefully how long does it take to skein up one of these little boogers? Um, so the way my equipment is set up is we have six um, or three vertical winders with two on each side. So six skeins at a time. And um, Henna and I are probably the most efficient at them. And we, we kind of had a race um, timed each other. If I'm doing, like, if I'm solely focused on that, I don't touch my phone. I was able to do um six games in uh cut down to eight minis in 30 minutes that's my best time wow so we can in 40 skeins divided by six it's uh we get six rounds plus four so seven rounds so it's it's a lot (laughs) it's a lot of math it's a lot yeah and then my friend carrie uh who's alpenglow industries she created um she's an engineer and she's an amazing, amazing person. She created this um, device that I plug into my winder that will shut off at a certain count. So yeah, so I, I set it to that. And so it automatically shuts the winder off and it, and it counts the rotations. And then the next thing she created was a skein twister. And so it looks like a hook and I press the pedal and it twists because before I used to have to twist all the minis myself. And that's, what is that 320 minis when I do a set like that and my knuckles my hands would get swollen because it's so much work as you uh, guys when we buy these we have to buy them by 100 yeah 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 you get 160 at a time um so yeah it's this is not anything glamorous at all but yeah the, there's a lot of time and energy that goes into those yeah but that's what this is for to see to <laughs> see the back see the people yeah. that work downstairs yeah <laughs> Um, so I don't know that everybody here knows what TNNA is Um, some of you do some of you don't that's our national association for the needle arts that's what it's called the national needle arts association well yesterday day before unfortunately they're probably not going to exist anymore if you hear me talk about going to market or whatever that's where I'm going to Ohio to look for people Yes, I know I do. To look for people like Laura Jean and Shannon or uh, something new and fresh to bring to the store. Well, anyway, it doesn't look like it's going to happen anymore. Really? Um, Not yes. just this year, but ever? It sounds like huh. ever. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So uh, on a serious note, I'm not very serious at all, but what do you guys, what do you think you're going to do to fill in that hole? Um, so for yarn shops uh, the on the wholesale side we we've been doing um youtube lives and um 
and like we do the Shanna Jean show, you know, for retail for anybody, but we started doing wholesale sh um, YouTube shows, I think the beginning of this year, maybe. February, I think. Yeah. And then, um, and then pandemic happened and Shannon and I can't be in the same room together. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, um, so we had kind of already like before TNA said they have canceled, we were like, there's no way in God's green earth, we're going to make it there. So we had already planned on doing, um, a YouTube live for wholesale in the studio, but we kind of assumed Shannon would be there with me. Um, and I don't, unless we're wearing masks, I don't know if that's really going to happen. Um, and also full honesty, if that means I need to set up a booth, I need to set up a space. I need, you know, it's me. <laughs> it's just mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Um, and so Shannon and I've been trying to figure out a timeline of, of when and how that will happen. Um, and then just setting up, you know, one-on-one -on -one video chats with, um, with yarn shops. And, uh, the biggest, hardest thing about TNNA not happening, two things, the food, because we love to eat and barrio we, tacos. We found the best taco place ever. Yeah. In Cleveland. Yeah. And bagel. I found the best pho place. Yeah. Gosh. I yeah. had to eat it every time I was there. Oh my God. I mean, it looked like going into, you know, the back street of Vietnam somewhere, but man. Best food. Ugh. Yeah. We're super bummed about not eating, but also getting to talk to yarn shop owners, you know, this mm -hmm. kind of thing, this is our jam. This fills our bucket. Um, and building community and seeing what folks are up to where they live and what's happening in their community. Um, oh, and it's good to see you guys on the East coast too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we have a, oh, you probably already know about it and I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, but our biggest, um, fiber show, in the southeast is called South, southeastern fiber fair and that is be becoming huge yeah. so if you ever find yourself on the east coast look at that one i know people tell me it's a little bit expensive but who knows if they're gonna have it i year. know yeah we've kind of decided that we don't know if there's gonna be traveling until 2022 at this point <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's really hard to know um I feel like, you know, with the TNNA thing, I feel like our industries are already been heading kind of, you know, to more of this kind of stuff. And this, this pandemic has pushed us into all getting a little more comfortable with this kind of technology, mm -hmm. um, which is a great way to connect with people. You know, I mean, it's, it's definitely got its, but it, would be, it would be much the, better to be sitting in a room with y'all. Here's you the know? problem I see after being at quilt market for many, many years. You're, you're not touching the yarn, you're not seeing the samples, you're not visualizing what they are. They're completely different online than they are. Absolutely. So are you telling me, Christy, that they're not going to have any kind of wholesale show? Is that what TNNA is? Yeah. So there'll be none. Mm -mm. None. You know, before um, uh, the quilt festival, there's always a quilt market for the wholesalers to come. Mm -hmm. So they get to see all the new products before they're... Yes, yeah, so that's what they called um, all the Friday night thing. You can have... We can buy the from them, um, you know, their new things to take home with us to sort of... Right. That's off. absolutely true. I don't... I, somebody should step up to the market and and see that this is i mean yeah i mean i don't know that this thing wasn't um there there i don't want to talk out of place yeah. but there were some rumors before that you know there were some leadership changes and so it just yeah. might have been the final final nail in the coffin maybe yeah 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 maybe maybe so they just come up with a better idea yeah, yeah. yeah. I will say that we do, Nidwit has reps, and so... Yes, that, we have one. Yeah, yeah, you all have Priscilla, and she is gangbusters. So mm -hmm. having reps makes it possible for yarn shops to still see the yarn in person and get to touch and feel, and we send out samples. And like Christy said, we were already sort of thinking like, every year it was like, this, this show needs to be a success in order to justify going, because it costs anywhere from five to ten thousand dollars for us to exhibit there and that's a lot of money so instead 
taking that money and purchasing plane tickets, renting a car and doing, you know, little tours of, of, of groups of shops. Um, it, you know, that's another option once we can, tra you know, safely travel again. I yeah, know. I'm going to miss going to River Colors. River <laughs> Colors is my favorite in Cleveland. Mm. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. so that's it. I mean, things that you have to, you have to adapt. If you can't right. adapt. Right. Yeah. And it'll cool. be interesting to see what comes out of this. Because I think a lot of, mm -hmm. there are going to be a lot of really good things that come out of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, in the end. Yeah. I think. And I think communities are deepened when you're, you know, you all are taking, you know, putting forth the energy to like sign on to, you know, to sign on to this technology and, you know, like, I mean, this is really, this is good stuff to keep building these communities, even though we can't meet how we would want to be meeting, you know? Well, I want to tell you, Christy, um, I never have time to go down to the mural shop. Um, and, you know, I get the emails and I see where the pictures are posted of special yarn that's come in and I'm like oh I need to go there on Saturday when I have time off and then stuff always happens but as a result of this situation we're in the shop is now online and it's like as soon as I saw the shop was online I went through and looked at everything and I was like oh I'm gonna have a cart full of stuff here but we well, better go like, ahead and do it because we have 15 percent off until the end of uh, Sunday but for Mother's Day Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I guess mm -hmm. I better fill up my card again. Yes. <laughs> but this it's is, just, now's the time. <laughs> you know, to, to me, it's, you know, I don't have time to go, but it's nice to visit the shop online. And then when you guys have special yarn in, I can be like, oh, well, maybe I can get some of that finally. So, because mm -hmm. I never get to go unless it's a yarn crawl. Yeah. Now, so, so we weren't, we did not have an online shop before this happened. We had a web page, you know, that you could get our information as far as hours and classes and you could sign up for classes. So it was something we always wanted to do. We just didn't have time to do it. Guess what? We were given all kinds of time and luckily, Crohn's lady, say hi. Hello. <laughs> hi, Crohn's person is very 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 smart at the computers yeah, the, te is. the technologies and i don't do that so she you know she really was in her element and has done a fantastic job yes. now she'll tell you that she needs to fine tune some stuff and whatever but in a very short amount of time a couple weeks mm -hmm. a couple three weeks we managed to get all the little doodads and this is the mats and buttons <laughs> and work. it was incredible mm -hmm. that's awesome yeah, that's amazing. So we're still trying to explore online classes or what does that look like? I mean, we have a happy hour every Friday that we had before this closed. Last week we couldn't do it because we had a few customers, but you know, that's been something. But you know, it's just kind of hard to, for instance, I, I couldn't rack my brain and I'm fairly creative, but I could not come up with one witty or pretty or anything for Mother's Day. You know, I think it's the time too that your brain's just like, you know, I did this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. Now I gotta do regular stuff like Mother's Day. So we just decided that let them buy what they want. Here's a discount. Right. right. So, but um I'm just so uh, so grateful to you two for even taking the time, you know, because these guys, these are big players in the um in the hand dot the hand the hand dot industry and that they took the time for our tiny little yarn shop in Mary Vegas. Um, you know Yeah, I wanna say we thank really you. I appreciate that. I wanna say thank you to all three of you. I mean Christy for you putting it together and then yeah. for Laura Jean and Shannon joining it. As soon as I got the email about nude wit, I was like oh, well, I'm just going to have to change what time I take lunch at work and watch it on my lunchtime break. That should make you too happy it. for the rest of the day, right? I think <laughs> maybe Get my yarn fix for the middle of the week. <laughs> Thank you so much. I love this. And uh, my kids think I'm just stupid old mom. So this feels real good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've got all these people going, oh, you make all this pretty string. <laughs> okay. Also, have is, has it, I'm a huge romance book reader. Has anybody read Penny Reed's books? Because she does a series that is 
is very close to Knoxville. So I feel like I know y'all. <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of books from your area. And I well, the thing about it is I'm, lo I'm looking at the screen here and I can think one, two, three, and me. I don't know about Laura. Are the only real Tennesseans. Oh, okay. Here. This area yeah. that we live in is was rated by Forbes as uh, the uh, number one place to retire. So yeah. Yeah. we're a mixed oh, we're group. Here. Yeah. Number one yeah, place in Tennessee, anyway. I'm one of those people that they call damn Yankee. So. <laughs> Yeah. And we for those that live on the West that. Coast that don't know what damn Yankee is, it's a Yankee that came here and never left. We're not, so. I don't allow people to use words like that because I'm married to one. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I feel like I could fit in there with my hick name, so. Laura Jean, yes, I guess Laura that is. Jean, yes. You have to have a double name to live in the South. Double name, yeah. Vita <laughs> Marie, though, what? Yeah. 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 My mom's family's from the south, like southern Illinois, next to Kentucky. Like there, I don't know if y'all know. We don't consider that south. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. Her accent, uh, I've only heard it from one other person in my whole life because it's like such the such a strange little isolated area. Mm. And I was in college, and my professor started talking. And I was like, "Why is my grandma here?" And it was it was because she's from the same area. She was on the Kentucky mm -hmm. side, but yeah, it was the same little community. The dialects are so different, even from area to area. Now, I'm originally from Cleveland, Tennessee, which is right above Chattanooga. But I lived a long time in Knoxville. And the dialects in Chattanooga and Knoxville, they're little yeah. bits, but you can hear it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. So, I mean, I don't think that I sound Southern, but I'm sure to you guys, I do. <laughs> sure. Well, actually, I can hear it. I can hear it myself. Okay, well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm from New Jersey, and the first thing I get asked is, oh, that's New Jersey. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but people up there don't talk like that. I'm sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> I want to have one more question, and then I'll, you know, I won't take up too much more of your time, but this might be, a, a, it just occurred to me. Where do you see the next trend going as far as um, patterns and design? That's probably more of a Shannon question. Yeah. Um, because, you know, things do trend and things are cyclical. Yeah. Like, you know, we went through the, the hand dyed fluorescent and then, you know, I noticed everything went softer and more muted tones. And now I don't know where it's going to go. Yeah. But. I feel like design wise, I think we're going to see more, um, we're going to see a return to like single skein projects. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've had this um, five skein shawl you know, thing, which is wonderful because these are, these are big shawls that you can wear, but it's also very expensive. And I think we have more of a return to people being more cognizant of financial constraints on knitters, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I think there are going to be more kind of single skein projects that the bigger designers are going to start doing. Okay. And I think there are always going to be the huge, you know, like Stephen West's huge shawls and, um, I'm, I'm you know, working on painted uh, painting bricks. Yeah, yeah, but I think people. Ooh, are maybe you guys could dye me up some kits for that. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm I'm t I'm totally ADD with this knitting, and you change colors every four rounds, and then he taught the new technique thing, and I'm off running. But yeah, I mean it is expensive. Yeah. You know, I try to always remember. You know, my grandmother taught me to knit. Okay, and she's 98 now. Can you believe that? Oh and um you know she lives on social security so i try to remember that we need to have things like that for people like her yeah. that she should be allowed to have the same experience as somebody that can spend right. you know 150 dollars to 200 dollars on a sweater yeah. so yeah, yeah and that's hard to uh, it's hard to do sometimes especially when you're around it all the time and you think oh this is so cool and all this no i want to buy this other stuff right yeah, yeah. so you know yeah. you're trying to keep yourself in check a little bit about being snobby yeah, I think, uh, and that's such a great point, because I, I definitely have had to check myself a lot. Um, I feel like I was raised in this, in the knitting world as like the hand dyed skein was, that was it. There was nothing else. And if you wanted to use anything else, it was trash. 
And so <laughs> it's so important to remember there is a rainbow of budgets, there's a rainbow of yarn, and it's all great. It's all wonderful and it all has a place. And, and it's all filling a place in our souls yeah. to be able to make no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. What about color? Well, I'm trying to push the trend back to solids. <laughs> easier to die to die for sure <laughs> um yeah, i think speckles speckles are going out right yeah i feel like there's been a little bit of a yeah i don't i i think it's it's super hard to i feel like i love I, speckles but you know yeah. people are kind of like eh, that's so yes maybe just not as much on the forefront as they've been yeah 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 cool. uh, yeah i like solids i like stripes because it's that thing of like, oh, I just, two more rows, I'm going to switch, two more rows or four. Like, it, it keeps me going through a project. So, that's Strict always... Knitting is definitely faster than knitting. <laughs> yeah. Right? Shannon, do you ever do any sweater patterns? Um, yes, I, I haven't done many sweater patterns. Um, I don't have uh, a lot of, like, grading skills, you know, and, and grading is a huge skill, understanding how to grade out a sweater. Um, I do have a sweater that um, Laura Jean and I are going to be promoting soon. It's called the Hazelwood, and it's a striped sweater. It's got three colors, so it's, um, I think I have it right here. I'll, let me grab it. I'll show it to you. Believe it or not, a huge, a huge po uh, percentage of my customers are sweater knitters. Yeah. So sweater knitting. Is, um, people are loving sweaters the last couple of years. So yeah. it's just a really, it's a simple top-down raglan. Oh, yeah. Um, Look at that, Vita. That looks just like you, Vita. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, yeah it's let's got just, Let's see the bottom. Does the bottom have a pat? Yeah, oh, that's oh, cute. Yeah. Here, I'll put it on. So that green bottom color goes around the band as well. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just oh, real. Okay. Oh, I put my chair right in front. Oh, so that's that cute. And it's a V neck. Very yeah, cute. Yes. <laughs> very cute. And I can see you in that Vita. Which yarn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is in Knitted Wits, um, a brand new yarn called Sport. It's a sport weight superwash. How many yards? Um, this size, which is the forty inch bust, is um. I feel like it's two skeins of each. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many yards per skein? Oh, sorry. Uh, in the new yarn. Three, 380, I think. Oh, good. I was hoping you would say something like that. Yeah. yeah. Another thing that's very popular with us is the mega skeins. Mm. You know, people yeah, love that. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Miss Babs at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's got those yowzas that are huge. Yeah. I just love that stuff. I love it too. Yeah. But yeah, we can't wait for that sweater pattern to come out. Vita needs that in her yeah, life. Yeah, for sure. The, the pattern's out. You can get it now in Ravelry. What, okay, is, what is it called it? again? What? Hazelwood. 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 Yeah. Hazelwood? It's my neighborhood. It's the name of the Oh, and do you design this one? Yes. Yep. We and need to start a Hazelwood knit along. Yeah. Hazelwood knit along. Yeah. Yeah. Christy, when will you be getting that yarn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 we're promoting for fall knitting yeah. for yarn shops so. well yeah. i've got some ladies that say they've knitted so many linen sweaters to get ready for spring because they're stuck at home now they're ready to do this stuff for right. the winter yeah. yeah already well we don't really have much of a winter compared to portland right. yeah. yes okay. you do it's your winter it's a winter winter. I'm from Florida. No. Oh. <laughs> it's all relative. <laughs> so I'm happy has... to live in a place that you can knit with wool and actually wear it. Yeah. <laughs> so anybody have well, I see Shannon, you got thirty seven projects on rivalry for that your cardigan there. So yeah. um, lots of people have already test knit knitted it for you, so to speak. Yeah, yeah it's, um, I just re-graded, you know, I just had it re, um, had the sizes expanded, but it's been out for a couple of years, and we're going to do, a, um, we are going to do a knit along um, starting soon for it, too. We're putting the fin finishing touches on that. Yeah. And is this something that we can zoom in on, too, or, you know, 
join um, you in with. Yeah, we should do. I mean, we have a Zoom. We have a Zoom hangout for our partnership. Like you know, kind of, we're just hosting it for a knit along. We're doing um, a social distancing knit along. Mm -hmm. um, that's every Thursday, and we have it either at 6 p.m. Pacific time because we're in the Pacific time, so it'd be kind of late for you all. But um, or 12. Oh, well, how early was it this morning that you had to get on? Just 10. Tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. yeah, not bad. Um, but the, our the Zoom that we have that probably this knit along will carry into. Again, we're still putting the finishing touches on it. But um, 12:30 is this week. 12.30 yeah. or 6. So yeah. this week is 12.30, which is 3.30 for you all. You all are more than welcome to join us. It's a great group of people. Um, and then the next week is going to be 6. So every other week it's either 12.30 or 6 because we want to hit as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and just doing a knit along with Laura Jean's yarn and my patterns. Um, but whatever you're working on is fine. We're not, we don't have really strong rules. We just want to hang out with people. Does anybody have any final thoughts? Um, Barbara, Barbara I just comment. need to say goodbye to everybody because I've exceeded yeah. my lunch break here, but I enjoyed meeting everybody and um, I want to say thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I have to run too, but thank you very much. Yeah, yeah don't, uh, don't get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Christy. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.